Hey everybody, welcome back to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and here on my YouTube channel. And this time out, we're gonna take a look and a listen to another one of the Wes Audio hardware units. This is the Dione by Wes Audio. You're looking at the plug-in uh, controlled uh, portion of the hardware here on the screen. We're gonna take a listen to it on some drums and on a kind of a full mix to see what this compressor sounds like. It's kind of a, a kind of an emulation, if you will, of the SSL series VCA G series bus compressor. Very, very cool. So we're going to take a look and a listen to it. So before we get started, if you like what you see in this video, please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell. Also, if this is your first time here, go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and I want to give you a free mixing course worth about 50 bucks. It's my gift to you just for visiting homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to give you another free gift. So continue watching. So here we are in Studio One, and here is the plug-in portion of the West Audio Dione compressor. And somewhere on the screen, I'm sure you'll see the actual hardware unit itself. So now, what's great about West Audio? What I love about the West Audio hardware is not only does it sound great, which we're going to listen to, but what makes them really unique is that it's 100% analog signal path, right? It's hardware, analog hardware, but it's fully digitally controlled by the plugin here. So what does that mean? What that means is, is that you could go from one session to another, have the Dione on 10 different sessions with 10 different settings. And every time you bring up that session, it is gonna instantly recall the settings that you had when you close that session last. So what you don't need to do anymore when you're using hardware is you don't need to write down all the settings and take photos of the actual hardware. So when you're switching between sessions, you don't have to recall everything manually. That's the genius of this Wes Audio hardware. I love all their stuff. All their stuff sounds really, really great. They're a manufacturer out of um, the country of Poland. They don't make a ton of different uh, models and makes and models of different gear. They make a very select amount of um, hardware and all their stuff sounds really, really good. So I consider them probably more of a little bit of a boutique kind of a, um, kind of a manufacturer. Stuff sounds great, high quality, wonderful stuff. And because it's 100% digitally controlled, that uh, got my attention. And to me, that's a game changer. So now if you want to learn more about all the Wes Audio stuff and you want to check out some of this stuff for yourself, you can click the link in the description box below that'll bring you out to Sweetwater. Sweetwater sells the whole catalog of Wes Audio stuff. In full disclosure, that is an affiliate link. So if you do purchase something from Sweetwater using that link, I do get a small commission, but you're helping me here at Home Recording Made Easy and you don't pay any more for the product. So thank you very much in advance. So let's walk through the Dione. Looks very familiar, right? Um, I love the white uh, faceplate on it. It looks really classy, kind of rich looking. I really do like it a lot. Let's walk through the controls here and then we're going to listen to it. So if you start here at the top, now one thing about the uh, hardware in the plugin is that the, um, as you can see, as I touch the hardware, the, touch, the hardware is um, has touch sensitive controls, which means when I touch them, you'll see they'll light up here with my finger here. And if I were to turn any one of these controls, like the threshold here, you can see the plugin, it moves on the plugin, okay? So the hardware is controlling the plugin. And just the same, if I take the plugin here on the screen, you can see that also on the hardware, the LEDs are changing. So you can either grab onto the hardware if that's what you like to do, the plugin, or a combination of both. It really doesn't matter. And there's no lag at all. It works absolutely beautifully. And this is uh, all the controls that are on the hardware and the plugin. Okay, so that's really, really ingenious and really, really cool. So again, let's start at the top. We have our threshold here. Pretty common. We have a wet dry mix here. So we can go from, 100, from a dry to 100% wet or anywhere in between, great for like parallel compression. We have our makeup gain here as well. Okay, on the top three. Underneath that, we have our attack settings. Now this has a few more different attack settings than a typical SSL bus compressor, which is really nice. We got six different attack settings here from 0.1 all the way to 30 milliseconds. We have a release here as well, um, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.9, 1.2, and then we have an auto release. Next to that, we have a side chain filter uh, where we can have 60, 90, 150, and then T1 and T2 are is like a tilt EQ kind of a thing. Um, similar to what you would see maybe on the thrust section of the API 2500 bus compressor. So that'll just kind of give you a, a, a bump on the low and the high end here with the tilt curves, okay? Or you can shut it off completely when none of the LEDs are lit. Um, underneath that here in the bottom left hand corner, which makes this um, unit unique. And what I really love about all the Wes Audio hardware is even their EQs, they have the THD, total harmonic distortion settings. 
Now on the diode, you have two modes. You have medium and high, and we're gonna listen to that on our sound examples in a second, or you can shut it off when the LEDs are not lit. Adds a lot of richness, a lot of richness and a lot of color and some distortions, pleasing distortion to your audio signal. Really cool. In the center, we have a bypass button here as well where the meter will turn on and off. Now what you see here on the uh, front here on the plugin, and you'll also see it hopefully on the hardware, is this little USB uh, port here. If you're using the Dione or any one of the 500 series modules with another 500 series chassis that's not a Wes Audio chassis, mine happens to be, but if yours was not, you can still use the Wes the Wes Audio 500 series modules in any chassis and you would use a micro USB cable connected directly to your computer and that is what gives you the control between the plugin and the hardware. Make sense? However, if you're using a Wes Audio um 500 rack, which is what I'm using, the Titan. Therefore, there's only one USB cable in the back of the 500 series that goes to my computer. And then any one of the 10 modules that I plug into the rack are all controlled with that one USB cable between plug-in and hardware. So I'm not using physically using the, um, the, uh, the, the port here on the front of the hardware because I don't need to because I'm using a Wes Audio uh, chassis. But like I said, you can use any one here, okay? So, what we're gonna to listen to this on is I have this right now on um, a, a drum loop that I pulled out of SSD5, Stephen Slate drums, sounds great. We're gonna to listen to a drum loop here. And basically what I have is I have this uh, track here in brown, Oops, excuse me here for a second. This track is going right to this uh, hardware bus here. And on that hardware bus, I have uh, Pipeline XT by PreSonus uh, Studio One. This is the, the plugin that you use um, to um, insert hardware into your digital audio workstation workflow. Every DAW will do this slightly different. Uh, DAWs like Logic will have a plugin called the IO plugin, same concept. And when you set it up the first time and you ping it, it'll actually offset uh, the samples to compensate for the late latency for the round trip of audio going in and out of your interface. I have a full video on the YouTube channel uh, for this plugin. If you want to know about it, if you're a Studio One user, just search my YouTube channel for Pipeline XT and you will see it. Okay. And then after that, second plugin in the chain is the Dion um, bus compressor. Okay. So here we go. So let's listen to this on some drums here. We'll start with it. Uh, first thing I have here is I have it on a, let's see, we'll do it on a, like a 10 millisecond attack. We'll do a fast release here. Uh, we'll do like a four to one ratio. We'll do 100% wet and let's just dial in a little bit of compression. Let's uh, try to nail, you know, three, four dB and let's see what we have here. Oh, let me turn off the monitoring section of this thing. Here we go. Sorry. Let me bypass it. That's before. With. Now let's listen to uh, the side chain here. Right now the side chain is completely off, but if I if I put it on 60 or 90, you're going to hear the kick drum in the low end kind of that that transient will kind of sneak through as I kind of engage the side chain filter. Let's try that. That's 60. Bypass. That's set at 90. So we can compress here, use our wet dry knob. So you can go ahead and you can over compress a little bit, use the mix knob to get more of a parallel compression type of a deal. I'm gonna turn that back on 100% wet.
so there it is bypassed on and off. And what I hear when you engage the compressor, it gives a lot of tightness to that kick drum, really thickens it up kind of nice. It even helps shape and you know, control the snare transient a little bit. The snare is a little pokey and it kind of grabs it and pulls it in and it really kind of glues it together. Now, again, that in and of itself, you go, yeah, that sounds great. It's great sounding SSL style VCA compressor. And it is. Um, but what really makes this unique is the THD, the total harmonic distortion. So let me play with that and let me show you what that can do in a subtle way to really add some color and some nice saturation to your, in this case, our drums. On the medium setting. That's before. So it's going to add a lot of richness. Now we'll turn down the makeup gain a little bit so we can level match that a little bit better because it adds a little bit of a little bit more grit and a little bit of volume there when I have it on the highest setting there. So let's play with that. It's before. Nice. So it really brings the whole drum kit to life. Now, again, this is SSD5 by Stephen Slate. These are already highly well-recorded drums, great sounds already out of the box, kind of, you know, emulating what it would be like when you're mixing into this if you're working on a full session. So it really takes those amazing sounding drums in and of itself and just gives it that little push over the edge. The, the THD is the real secret, I feel, to the West audio hardware stuff in general. It's the thing that kind of sets it apart. It's very musical. It's not overly done. Sometimes I see on plugins, especially, but even some hardware where they have a saturation, a knob, or a, a total harmonic distortion button, it's either so subtle that you really can't tell that it's turned on and off, or what's worse is it's usually way too much and then most of the settings are unusable. Where in this case, they are very musical and they're very usable on either setting and they're not too much, but it's just enough to kind of really bring a richness to the sound. So let's just listen to that one more time. I'll cycle through the different settings. It's either medium, high, or off. We'll start with it off. Medium. High. Off. Completely bypassed. Okay, so that's drums. So now let's listen to that same thing, but let's listen to it this time on kind of a, a, a mix. So let me uh, just quickly, on a final mix, it's already been kind of done. Let's listen to that. So I'm gonna turn down these drums here and we're gonna, uh, let's see, we're gonna use this one here, this song here. So let's kind of listen to that. We'll pull up our diode here. This is just a, a, a stereo track, a final mix that was already mixed through an SSL. I believe it was an SSL, I believe it was, plug-in when we when I did the mix so it was lightly compressed it's already a finished track but again just to give just uh, let you see what it kind of sounds like on, on a final track here so that track here in purple is now being routed to this diode Chase it out with the TV or the news. I get tired of walking the line. I'm reaching out for someone. I'm reaching out for you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I'm reaching out.
again, a little bit more subtle when you're listening to it on a final mix like that, which it should be because I'm not compressing very much at all. But again, it just it adds a little bit of squeeze to it. You can feel it. Now, again, let's add some of that total harmonic distortion and let's see how that really can maybe add a little bit more of a unique character to this sound here. Please, please resist the violence lurking in your skin. Let it cut until it bleeds out grace Cause everyone feels alone I'm reaching out for someone I'm reaching out for you Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I'm reaching out for someone I am reaching out for you Can you hear me? Can you hear me? So again, even on a final mix, when you put the THD on its highest setting, it really, it doesn't overdo it. It doesn't overcook it. It's really nice. It's really audible. It really gives a nice richness to the sound. And again, what I hear when, when I bypass the unit completely is I hear that the mix doesn't seem to have as much depth and it's not as wide. It seems like this compressor adds a little more depth and a little bit more width um, to, the, uh, to the audio, which is great. So again, we'll just keep, we'll bypass it a few times on and off. And again, I can change the uh, attack settings a little bit and whatnot, and we can kind of play with that. Definitely sounds wider. I can really hear it in the bridge in that breakdown section as the toms start to come in those floor tom hits. It just gets a little bit bigger, a little bit wider when you engage or when you enable the Dion bus compressor. And again, on the highest uh, THD setting, now if we turn that off again. <laughs> Even the, the keyboards, the, the B3 that's in the background there, as soon as I, as I bypass it in and out, I hear those keyboards spread out and they just get wider. Um, and that's the thing that I keep saying in all these different videos where I'm doing hardware demos and especially when we start doing hardware comparisons to plugins, which we'll do in another video um, where we'll compare this to an SSL plugin, G series bus compressor plugin. There's a width that hardware seems to add, at least that this Wes Audio stuff seems to add a width and again, a depth to it that I don't hear so much without it, as much without it, and when we compare it to plugins. So again, kind of listen to that keyboard. If you can hear the, the, the chords being held, that B3, when I bring it in and out, and, and if I put it on its uh, highest THD setting, you can really hear it, but on the medium setting even, you could hear things just spread out a little bit. Isn't it so? 
To me, that that THD on the high setting is just gold. I love that. So that is a quick look and a quick listen to the Dion bus compressor by Wes Audio. Fabulous compressor. Great little 500 series piece. Again, it'll work in any 500 series rack. I believe the price on this is somewhere around 1100 to 1200 US dollars. Don't quote me on the exact price, but it's in that ballpark. Very reasonably priced for a 500 series stereo bus compressor, especially with the additional features. And again, to me, the biggest benefit of Wes Audio is the 100% digital control where no, the recallability is fully 100% recallable. That to me is the key to all of this. So I would encourage you to take a look at it. If you're in the market for a great SSL uh, bus compressor, for your 500 rack series, whether you're using a Wes Audio rack or another rack, this is definitely one you want to take a look at just for the recallability alone. And again, the THD really sets it apart from anything else, in my mind anyway. Again, you can check it out clicking the link in the description box below. It'll take you out to Sweetwater. I really, really enjoy this. This is really cool. They, they have the hardware where you can reach out and touch it or the plug-in or a combination of both is really good. It sounds really good. It has that SSL sound, that VCA compressor sound, that nice glue that we always talk about. And again, with the additional saturation settings, wonderful. Really great compressor. I'm really loving it. I'm using it on a lot of my mixes. It's a wonderful, wonderful unit. And I would encourage you to check it out. So thank you so much for watching and staying till the end of the video. So as I said in the beginning, I want to give you something for sticking around and watching. So you're already going out to Home Recording Made Easy and got your free mixing course, right? Right? If you didn't, make sure you go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com, right on the homepage. Get your $50 mixing course absolutely free. Pardon me. Now, you watch the mixing course. If you dig my style of teaching and you want to check out one of my other training courses on the website, I have everything from recording to mixing to mastering to EQ compression and blah, 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 blah. Any course on the website, I want to give you a 25% discount. I want you to use the coupon code YouTube25. You put that in the checkout. It will take 25% off any one of the training courses on the website. Again, thank you so much for checking out homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Thank you so much for checking out this video uh, with, um, along with in cahoots with my good buddies over at Sweetwater who sent this on over to me so I could demo this for you today. Thank you so much to them as well. And thanks, Wes Audio, for making such a great uh, piece of kit. I really love their stuff. I'm fairly new to the Wes Audio world. I, I, they haven't been on my radar for very long, and I have a lot of their units here in the studio, and I've been doing videos on them, so you'll be seeing all of them. So make sure you check the playlist below. Um, and everything that I've tried so far just sounds really great, really musical, and I'm really enjoying using their hardware. So until the next video, I've been Dave with HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.